What do you do if you see scratches on the surface of the finish or still visible even though you've gone through all the polishing and buffing steps? Well, it kind of depends on how bad they are. If you see scratches all over the surface of the instrument, what that means is that you didn't spend enough time with, say, the 1000 or the 1500 grit and remove all the scratches from those lower grits. So, what you'll have to do is you'll have to go backwards to maybe 1000 grit and spend some quality time with some sandpaper and 1000 grit and then go through the stages again. If, however, you just see one or two isolated scratches, that's a lot easier and a little bit different way to handle. You can take some 1500 grit or maybe 1200 grit if it's deep and just sand that little area where that scratch is till it's removed and then go through all the steps again. I noticed some large sanding scratches on the peg head when I was trying to polish it to gloss. So I'll start with 1500 grit and a small backing block. I'll wet sand it until the sanding scratches are all gone, or at least appear to be all gone. Then I'll switch to the 3000 grit Aberlon pad to refine the scratch pattern a little bit. This allows me to see whether I've got all the scratches gone and when they're completely removed, I'll just wipe off the excess and then go back to the buffing stage. So I know that some of you are asking, and it's going to come up no matter how good your buffing technique and your wet sanding technique is, you may get a rub through where you've actually wet sanded or rubbed through the finish down to bare wood. Now, I did it on this guitar mostly because around the sound hole, I was doing so many demonstrations of different techniques, I actually wore right through the finish. So let me show you what to do to fix that. This may be hard to see, but right here, I've burned through the finish down to bare wood. Everything else looks good over the entire surface, but really the only way that we can fix that is by applying more lacquer here. So what you'll need to do is to clean this surface with naphtha. Maybe give it a little light sanding, but make sure you clean it really well and then you can spray some more lacquer right in that area. Now what I do is I spray the first coat with that flash coat lacquer that we used. That has some retarder in it which will help to bite into the old finish. Then I'll spray around two or three coats just around that area of new finish, let it cure for a week, and then buff it out. I'm going to use the lacquer I saved from the final top coats the flash coat lacquer. I'll pour it into my spray gun, which is the detail gun. That's a small gun, and I'll put it through a strainer. Before I spray, I'll turn all my controls on my detail gun down, or I'll close them. I want to get a small, almost airbrush type pattern out of this gun. I'll turn the air pressure down and spray a practice coat. I'll spray just on the area that I want the lacquer to go. This setup on the gun and the adjustments I made should really eliminate the amount of overspray I get on the rest of the body. I'll apply one coat, let it dry an hour, apply another coat, let it dry an hour, and then apply one final coat about as thick as I can. Now if you were paying attention, I'm sure you noticed that I was only spraying the sound hole area. That's the reason I used the retarded lacquer, was because I want it to melt into the rest of the finish that I've already polished to gloss. You don't want to have to redo the whole top if you don't have to. So I'll then go back with 1200 grit. Now this is P1200, so I'm using 600 grade cram cami. I'll go back with 1200 grit. And I'll just level sand that area right around the sound hole that I sprayed. You don't have to sand the whole top, but you may want to just kind of feather it in a little bit. Then take your pad or your sandpaper and very lightly 
do the sound hole edge. Then come back with 1000 grit, 1500 grit, and then your Aberlon pad. Once you're done with that, you can go back to the buffer and then continue to buff out that sound hole. Now here we have a slightly different rub through problem. On the back of the peg head right there we've buffed or we've rubbed through the finish and a little bit of the color coat. So what we have to do to fix that is we have to replace the color first then we have to coat a little bit of lacquer over it just like we did the sound hole and then buff it out. Let me show you basically how to do that. Now just like I showed you with the troubleshooting in the gloss top coat section, you could take a brush, shellac, and some of those colors that we used and put a little bit of color on that little edge. But that's a very, very small edge and it's hard to control your color with that. So what I do is I just use a furniture touch-up pen. You can find these just about anywhere. This happens to be a Balin. If you can't find one, you could probably just use a brown Sharpie. These markers are nice because they have a fine chiseled edge which makes application of the color very precise and easy. Just apply it where you want it and any excess that you see, you can usually, if you get to it right away, just rub it with your finger and that will remove the excess. Now you might be tempted to call it done. You can if you want, but gradually that color will probably wear off. So what I would do, particularly if it was an instrument that I sold to somebody, I would go over that with lacquer, just like we did the sound hole, let it dry, and then rub and buff it out again.